Today, we're gonna look at three ways that you can escape the Christian girlfriend zone. I'm gonna start you off with a high yield nuclear warhead that most guys are too afraid to use, even though it works. It works so well that sometimes it works when you don't even want it to. Let me tell you some stories. Now, all of these stories have three things in common. See if you can spot all of them. Story one, be me at a New Year's Eve party. I'm thirsty, so I go to the kitchen. I procure a tasty beverage and head back to my friends, but there's a bunch of girls in the way. One of them is very in the way. I was like, I'm not waiting for this. So I walked up behind her, just gently put my hands on her shoulders and sort of freaking moved, woman. No, I just gently guided her out of my way and went back to my friends. The next day, one of her friends came up to me and said, I'm so mad at you right now. I was like, excuse me? Well, you were flirting with my friend last night and you didn't even go talk to her. First of all, speak English. Second of all, what? Whom the heck are you talking about? I was hanging out with the boys, playing Legos and listening to Creed. And she was like, oh, you're so clueless. You were flirting with my friend and she's so upset because you didn't even go over and talk to her once, all night. I was like, hang on, I'm just gonna dissociate for a second. Now keep in mind before this, I was invisible to all of these girls, right? Default settings. But apparently I did something that made this girl obsessed with me. Seriously, for years after that, I would randomly get a message from her just being like, hey, we should date. And I'd be like, no, I don't know, I don't know you. And she'd be like, oh, that's okay, we'll fix that. And then I'd be like, no, you, you don't know Jesus. And she'd be like, well, it's, don't worry about it. And I'd be like, I, I will, later, where are my Legos? Actually, seriously, where are my Legos? Where'd they go? Oh, yeah, I found them. Space ship. Second story. So this girl had just moved to town to go to Bible college. And again, no interest in me at all. I wasn't even in the friend zone. I was in the ghost realm. But then one day, all my friends are hanging out and somebody decided we should pray for her. It was like a dedication thing. I don't know. Christians are weird. So everybody lays hands on her. I put my hand on her back and pray for her. Same as everybody else. Go on about my way. Forget about the whole thing for weeks. Little did I know that something happened on that night. Now before she'd just been like, eh, he's just another dude. After that, she started simping like a female incel. Like this was bizarre. She'd send me these long Facebook messages about like, oh, you're so interesting. And you just, you have such good character. And I, I just really want to get to know you and want to hang out with you. And I was like, yo, slow down. Like, I don't know you. I've, how do you know all of this stuff about me? I've never talked to you. Did somebody put you up to this? This is a little weird. Like one time she went with her friends to drop something off at my house. This girl memorized where my house was, came back later and left a handwritten note on my doorstep. Grandma, you little victim. What? Like kind of freaked me out a little bit. I was like, oh wait, I understand why girls don't like it when guys simp for them. This is way too much pressure. Okay, third story, last one. So there was this girl in my church, the one that all the guys wanted, but she didn't want any of them. You know who I'm talking about, because you all have one, right? Until she was teaching a class that I was about to take, and I realized I couldn't actually make it to that class on time because I had to work. So I figured I should give her a heads up about that. So it's a Sunday, it's after church, and she's in the cluster. You know, the fortress of girls where they kind of hide. And I was like, I don't have time for this. I've got stuff to do. So I'm just gonna go tell her. So not thinking anything of it, I just kind of nudged my way through her friends and gently slid my hand across the small of her back to get her attention, because it was loud, and said, hey, can I talk to you for a sec? When I say she lit up like a Christmas tree, think Griswold's family Christmas. I had never seen her like that before. At least not with anyone who pisseth against the wall. It's in the King James Version. Look it up. It's not that serious. So we went just outside and she's like, yeah, yeah, what's up? I was like, that's a weird amount of energy, but I just want to let you know, I'm not going to be able to make it to your class on time because I have to work. And she was like, oh, that's it? That's all you wanted to say? I was like, yeah, that's, that's what else, what else would I say? Deuces. And then I left. Brothers. It took me five years to realize that I had fumbled the bag in that moment. The girl that wanted nothing to do with any of the guys was excited that I was about to ask her out. So the question is, why? What did I do? Well, what do all three of these stories have in common? Well, the first thing is they all involve physical touch. If done right, a simple touch can set off a nuclear level surge of feelings that take you from being just an invisible nothing to the, whew, I want that one 
zone. Now I can see a few people in the crowd having a heart attack because I know some of y'all have never touched a woman before and you're terrified, which is okay. But breaking news, if you marry her, you will have to touch her at some point. Most of you though are just scared of getting thrown in the gulag and I get it. This is kind of risky. If the girl isn't attracted to you, she takes it the wrong way, you could get me too'd. But there's another thing all these examples have in common that actually kept me safe. My reason for touching her had nothing to do with her body. Think about that. I wasn't doing it because I just wanted to touch her, right? That would be creepy. In all those instances, I had a totally different objective and she knew that. So it felt safe for both of us. Here's a few more examples of this. If she tells a joke, you can lightly tap her on the arm as you laugh at it. Or it could be just a handshake that lasts just a little bit too long so that she notices. Or a more advanced one, if her like hair is getting in her face or like there's you know something in her way, put a concerned look on your face and just kind of brush it out of the way and carry on as if nothing happened. Or one of my old favorites, I, I still do this with my wife, where if you're just out for coffee and you're about to order, you just kind of lightly put your hand on the small of her back and kind of guide her up to the counter. These are all small, safe gestures that make a physical connection with her and yet have nothing to do with her body. So she knows you're not trying to like take something from her. You're just interacting with her in a way that feels natural or at least it should feel natural. And that's where the third thing comes into play. The other thing all these examples have in common is they were totally accidental. I didn't think anything of it. So I never had a chance to like hype it up in my mind and get nervous about it. Like, oh no, I'm about to touch a girl. I didn't attach any significance to it. It's like I was just talking to one of the guys. So I came across totally natural and confident. Now I did that on accident in these examples, but eventually I figured out how to do that on purpose. And you can too. It's not easy, but if you can retrain your mind to stop attaching significance to the outcome, you can approach a woman with a presence and a vibe that make her feel like, hey, this guy's super confident and put together and that keeps her from getting the wrong idea about you. Guys, give this a shot because if you do this right, physical touch is electrifying for a woman and it can be the thing that takes you from being just a guy to the guy. Just be careful who you practice these on. Step two, lead something. A lot of guys sleep on this one, but I don't think they should. After I graduated Bible college, I was invited back the following year to teach. Now, there was a girl in my class who was interested. I don't like where this is going. And to be honest, I kept the door open. No, 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 no. But I waited till after she graduated to ask her out. That's good. I just want to know, make sure that's where we're going with that. Now, I know that she was attracted to me because I was the guy in charge. And I know this for reasons that we'll come back to later. But the point is, we're looking for stuff that works. And this is on the list. And it can be a lot of different things. For you, it could be a small group, a singles group, outreach group, a ministry, a game night group, a shared interest or activity group. Just lead something. If it's not out there already, start something. One of the things good girls find most attractive is a man who can lead her well. But how is she supposed to know if you'll be a good leader if she's never seen you lead anything? Now, to be fair, most guys know this already. They know that women are attracted to men who lead things, but they don't do it because of a few limiting beliefs. The first is they don't think they can lead. They think they're not cut out for it or they feel like, well, it just doesn't come naturally to me. So it must not be for me. And that's fair. Not many men feel a natural affinity for leadership. But if you want to be the head of a household, then leadership will always be a part of your role, at least to some degree. And women will judge you on your quality here. That's the thing about being a man is there's parts of your masculine role that you will have to grow into. It won't come naturally to you and just fit like a glove right away, but it is still your responsibility. You may not believe that you can, but I do. Because you're built for it, whether you feel like it or not. And I've seen it happen. This is also something I've seen a lot of guys overlook for ethical reasons. Like, ah, oh, shoot, this would give me an unfair advantage over the other guys and that would make me feel guilty. 
Brother, it's not, not that, that serious. serious. I'm like, oh, so sad. You're using your leadership position to show a woman that you genuinely are the thing she's looking for. I only see an ethical issue if you're being misleading or dishonest about it somehow. Or you're using your position to sleep with women and then discard them. But if you're not a fraud and she ends up happily married to you, then she got what she wanted, didn't she? No harm was done to her or anyone else. In fact, she actually benefited by ending up with you. So where's the ethical conflict? Guys, the dating market is inherently unfair. Women only go for the best guys that they can possibly get. So you will have to position yourself as the best that she can get. If other guys are upset by that, Meh. Nothing is stopping them from leading their own thing. So the way they feel about it has no bearing on your worth or your integrity. You don't need to submit to their feelings. So step one, confident physical touch. Step two, lead something. Step three, be a jerk. But fun. If there's one thing that will get you friend zoned by good girls harder than anything else, it's being too nice. If you're not in a relationship yet and she ever says to you, oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you're so nice. Brother, you messed up. <laughs> Bad. A lot of guys hear those phrases and think, oh, she's about to confess her love for me. I knew it. When what she actually said was, sir, you have no riz. Can we get an F in the chat for all of our fallen brothers? Respects. The phrase, you're so sweet, roughly translates from girl language to... I like the stuff that you do for me, but I have no interest in you. If you hear that phrase, you need to make fun of her, right? Insult her, stat. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding, actually. You should, you should do that. Third thing is playful teasing. You've probably heard some stuff about this, push-pull method and all of that. This is actually kind of the backwards version of the push-pull. Instead of starting with a compliment and then breaking the tension with a joke or an insult, you start with a bit of a light roast, and then you work your way back to the fun from there. To start, just pretend like she's one of the guys and just roast her a little bit. Now, it has to be enough of a burn that she actually feels a little bit uncomfortable, because otherwise she won't be affected by the push. Now, some ground rules. It has to be amusing, at least to you. If you're not smiling and having a good time about it, then you just look like a jerk. And the second part is just make it playful, right? That's the pull. Let her hang there in the tension of feeling roasted for a second and then turn it into a compliment to break the tension. Or sometimes all it takes is just to smile, to let her know that it's a joke and then just walk away. This demonstrates that you have no fear of her opinion of you, right? You're not afraid of losing her. Even if she's a little upset, that's okay. That actually builds her respect for you. And as we said before, Respect unlocks the door to attraction. She cannot be attracted to a man that she doesn't respect, and she will not respect a man who is scared of her. You're proving to her that you're not. This also creates a heightened emotional state that she actually loves being in. Even if she's a little miffed at you for teasing her, she wants to feel the feelings, right? All of the feelings. If she's feeling things when she's around you, that can spark something in her towards you. You're like, hey, this guy's actually kind of fun to be around. At least I'm not bored. So you want out of the friend zone. Confident touch, lead something, and don't be nice. Roast her a little bit sometimes. Those will potentially get you out. But a word of advice. All these things have worked for me, but in all those examples I shared, it didn't last. I wasn't able to make it stick for very long because I hadn't done the work yet to become the guy that they were looking for. Once those women realized that I wasn't as strong and secure as they felt like I was, all the feelings those things had temporarily stirred up faded and they lost interest. Teasing, touch, and leading can generate a spark in her that makes her feel a little bit differently about you for a little while. But if you haven't put in the work, the spark will not grow into a fire. Sustained attraction only comes from having an abundance that you're overflowing from. An abundance emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And that overflow comes from faith and work. Hard work. A lot of Christian guys are good at the faith part but sometimes hide behind the faith to get out of the work. If you want a woman, you can't shy away from the work. Another bit of advice, never 
hide behind your fear of losing her as a friend. Which, honestly, I would challenge you to examine that anyway. Is it really her friendship that you value? Or is it the hope that she might someday confess her love for you without you having to do anything? A lot of guys are hoping that their friend will just wake up and realize that, oh, you were the one for me all along, and then they'll just ride off into the sunset. As long as they never make a move, the fantasy remains undisturbed, and they can daydream about it forever. Because they never have to face the truth. It never becomes real to them that that was never going to happen. Face your fear, my friend. It's better to lose something that you never actually had than to live in a fantasy world for the rest of your life. One last thing. If she's not interested, just move on. If you do these three things and you've done the work to become capable and content with your life, you've built yourself into a man who's worthy of protecting and providing for and leading her, then congratulations, my friend. You have become the prize. She doesn't want you. It's her loss, not yours. Have some dignity. Act like you're worth something. Don't throw a temper tantrum and quit on all women forever. Just move on to the next one. If you're stuck on that girl and you just can't move on, it could be because your emotion tank is empty. It's a vacuum sucking in instead of overflowing outward. And if you need her to fill you, that could be why she put you in the friend zone in the first place. If you guys want to work on applying these skills or just becoming that man, the guy that has that overflow and that abundance to offer. There's still a few coaching sessions available. Check the link below. If you want to support this ministry, there's a few ways you can do that. Check the Patreon. There's extra content there. This week, I'm going to be talking about disconnecting your mind from the outcome and how to not care about it. Anyways, that's it. Stay weird. Get out of here. Hello, dog. I don't need you. Brother, it's not that serious.